Hey, this is David B69. Welcome to today's video. Please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well, and hit the notification bell for future videos. Let's get on to the show. Hey, this is David B69, and in today's video, I am going to talk about an exciting topic reselling okay i know reselling is kind of like a boring topic um but i just basically wanted to bring up the topic have a quick conversation about it my like positives and negatives all in regards to the topic and basically getting your trying to gauge your opinion on the topic um first i wanted to show a game that I got this weekend, it came in the mail, and I didn't do an unboxing on it because it was just one solo game. Um, and I got this from eBay, um, brand new copy of Dot Hack GU on the PS4. Um, this has uh, Rebirth, Reminisce, Redemption, and, and Reconnection volume for Ryan 4. Um, so it's like really cool. Um, I didn't have any of these. I have, I have volume one and two on the PS2, but they're different. They have different names. I think it's a different series altogether, but it's fun. I like that version of the RPG. So I figured, Hey, why not pick this one up? It's a lot cheaper than picking up those other ones on the PS2. And I can basically just, I don't have to do any extra work with it. I can just basically put it on my PS, in my PS5, play along, and just go. So it's cool. Um, I got that, and I got Final Fantasy 1 through 6 on my PS4, or PS5, whichever one you call it. It's basically PS4 and PS5, so um, I'm downloading them to each one, so it's, it's all good. Um, just for right now, I'm using it digitally. Um, probably eventually I'll pick it up. So I have a physical disc because I like physical copies. Um, but for the time being, being, it just made sense just to get it digitally. Um, but I wanted to basically bring that up because, like I said, I bought it off of eBay. Because people are doing things on eBay and on Amazon. And I don't know how much, how much you notice people like, like do reselling on Amazon. They do reselling on Walmart. They do reselling on Target. Like so many people anymore. It's like, you don't even know where you're buying things for until you're actually at checkout. And they, it says on the little thing, it's sold, sold through Target to such and such. I mean, we don't know who that such and such is. We weren't shopping through such and such, but they're trusted because it comes through Walmart. So it's, it's, it's a trusted thing or it's trusted because it comes through Amazon, but it could be Phoenix resale that basically is sending it to you. Um, it's kind of like, yeah, I don't, I really don't care for that kind of thing that much. And I really don't buy. I don't really buy that many things unless it's like, like I said, this was $15. I mean, I, um, I'll spend $15 on it without even thinking. Um, but the, what's it called just, I don't know. I, I really wouldn't spend like, I've seen Phoenix retail do videos and, um, and he's one of the reasons that I bring up the topic of resales is because he does his whole channel is on reselling and it's fine because he actually like goes through and he goes step by step and he basically walks people through what he does which is cool i mean i'm like i'm not a reseller but i like that he actually like tries to openly go through his process um am i a big fan of the process and not too much but he, what's called, he does go through it and I do got to pay him respect because I really just appreciate that he does that. Um, like I said, I'm not a huge fan, but I mean, it is what it is. Um, the, what's called the things I didn't really like is, um, 
The one thing I really didn't like was on his channel, he did this GameCube gambit where he was going through and saying it was for his childhood, um, collecting all of these GameCube games. And I mean, they could have been from his childhood that he was looking for. This could be like an actual memory. Now, I don't know if it was him or his wife, pretty much like a week after they did all this collecting and all this flipping of all these other games. I don't know if like the sales didn't work out on some of those items that he bought and that didn't work out. I don't know. I mean, as a reseller, it's really, really hard to tell what exactly happened. And he's not going to go through his personal sales and how they worked out. He doesn't go through that because honestly, it's none of anybody's business. He basically tries to say, this is what this is valued at, and this is what I'm expected to get. Expected. Doesn't always guarantee anything. That's the problem with people going out and saying, oh, I'll just, I'll be a reseller. I'm going to just be able to do this, and it's not going to be a problem. Number one, there's fees. Number two, you don't know what the market is. You don't know if things are going to get returned on market. There's just so many little things that are involved in being a reseller that it's just kind of like kind of like a really hard market to get into. So I'm not a big fan of it, which is like I said, I'm fine with it. Um but are you a are you a fan of it? Um now me personally, I have sold things to DK Odies. I have sold things way in the past to GameStop. I mean that's been like ten plus years for that. Um I have sold things to mom and pop shops. Um, basically have a bunch of money in my wallet from going to a store a couple weeks ago. And I basically just got these things where I thought I was going to get $50 and I walked home with like pretty much $85, $90. I mean, that's great. I mean, I'm like really happy with that. And I'm going to go back to that guy's store and I'm probably going to either buy some stuff or I'm going to sell him more stuff because I have like a lot of things that are not part of my collection. Um, I basically have stuff on the side that I keep kept in stuff and just really don't need or want to have in my collection anymore because they were really not something I was collecting for. Um, I have well over 2,000 games. It's a lot. Um, do I want to go through and I try to go through each one of these. I'm like, what are the, my childhood memories of each one of these? Well, a lot of these games anymore, I don't have any childhood memory games. These NES games hold pretty much zero childhood memories for me. Most of these games that I've played on the NES, I was at least like 30 plus years old when it was the first time I played the games. There's probably like one or two exceptions um, and that was from when my nephews had, had some of the games, but like I said, I really rarely played them. So it wasn't a personal connection. Same thing goes with the Super Nintendo games, Super Nintendo games, never had the system, no personal thing. I mean, I really like in the past, I collected a lot of the games on the NES and the Super NES. Um, and by the time I got to 50 games, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to get rid of these games in the system because I, I really just don't have the love for it. Now, right now, I've really been enjoying the actual collecting of it from things like Video Games Monthly, where I'm getting like, like basically like five plus games every month. And I have no idea what's coming in. And it's a real joy to like plug them in and see what I get. And it's like just that mystery in that is like really, really cool to me. And I really enjoy it. So that's always a plus right there. Um, but like I said, I got like 400 plus PS2 games, like well over 100 PS1 games. Um, I got like, Tons of GameCube, PS3, um, Game Genesis games. I'm, a, I'm almost at 200 Genesis games. 
Now, I was over 200 Genesis games, but a lot of them didn't have manuals. So I winded up going through the ones and get rid of, getting rid of anything that did not have a manual. Um, and there was one of them, one of the games didn't have an authentic case. Um, just basically said, see ya. Um, not in my collection anymore. Um, just because I really want authentic games with authentic cases. Now, obviously, like these games and stuff and these games, they're not authentic cases. Obviously, I'm not doing that with every single game. Kind of impossible to do. It's like when I'm going through collecting, I'm not going to be able to get all these boxes and stuff. I mean, I mean, like this Jordan versus Bird. I mean, this is an NES game. Now, personally, I I think this is an authentic game game case, but personally, I think this. No, it, it definitely has the feel and look and everything of a real thing. But do I know 100%? No. Do I know Do I know what an authentic Genesis game in case feels like? Yes, because that's what I had when I was younger. Um, I mean, I was like 20 years old when I started getting the Genesis games. And I really, really loved them. Um, and being able to plug in every single one of these games... Uh, and not, I didn't have, I mean, I had most of these games, um, but I have more games now for Genesis than I had when I was younger, because I didn't have that money. So, why would I have it? So, my big question for you, and since I'm actually, and there is, it is the crux of the question, I mean, there is a big thing that I am asking here. I have a lot of stuff on the NES. I have a lot of stuff on Super Nintendo. I have a lot of stuff on N64. Obviously, I love that stuff. I love my Genesis stuff. My question is, at what point do, should I like, it's even really, it's really hard to ask and everything. If it was you, your opinion, would you resell a huge chunk of certain consoles and then just focus all your energy on one console because it's like honestly it's like I can get like a really good amount of money reselling a lot of these games but I would only be getting 50 60 percent of value and then I could basically use that money and focus it on NES or Super NES and basically maybe get some big scores. Um, it's really, really hard to figure out what to do in that matter. Um, and honestly, it's like something that has been like teetering in my mind. Um, do you flip and try to go for big scores? Because um, like I said, we're, I'm going to, going to Siege this summer. Um... And I'm sort of wondering if I make a big flip and I just concentrate just on one system or a couple systems, what would I do and what should I attack? I'm just really trying to figure that out. Um, now there's the one videos that I enjoy and I enjoy watching. Um, they pretty much go from zero, from zero to Z. Um, or Zed or whatever I think it is, um, going through the entire gaming collection and figuring out what to keep, what what stays and what goes. Um, number one, I can't do that. If I wanted to do that, I would do it. But it's over two thousand videos and games. That's that's just way too much, and the amount of turnover that would happen during the entire thing. I just couldn't do it even if I wanted to. It just, there's just no time. I mean, I'd basically get through a couple letters and then I would be restarting it again because I'd probably collect a bunch of, of new ones. Um, just really impossible to to fathom and go in any kind of direction. Um, but the main question is, do I 
stick with the current mantra. Do I just keep on collecting the way I'm collecting right now and just keep on this path? Or do I just say, heck with it, get rid of certain systems and basically just concentrate on one system or two systems? Um, let me know what you think them below. I just wanted to get your thoughts. Um, and my cat is going absolutely haywire. Um, yeah, he's just, he's going nuts. He found a pillow on the floor and he's balancing himself on the pillow. Um, just because he wants to make it his bed. What can you do as a cat? Um, anyways, so that's my thoughts on my video. I really just, like I said, reselling, yay for it, nay for it. Um... Like I said, I, I mean, I, I people have a market for it. Um, like it's like I said, DK Oldies, they what's called they buy things. Do they buy it? That, that's another thing too. It's like if you get if you ever sold things to DK Oldies, they have the most messed up system for buying games that you could imagine. Okay, they have to want the game. If they don't want the game, they offer you pretty much like a tenth of the value. Um, if they, I mean, if they don't want the game, they'll offer you the tenth of the value. If they want the game, they'll offer 50% of the value. Now, here's the crazy part. What they'll sell it for is 50% above market price if it's in good condition. And if it's not in good condition, they'll come close to the uh, what market value is, which is insane because if it's not good shape, then that's not market value. So it's really, really messed up. Um, I think they're basically doing that based on they're basically taking like all the con all the stuff in, and they're they're not doing grading as it comes in. They're basically just giving blank value and then basically trying to turn it over. And then once it goes into the system, that's when they do the value of it, which makes no sense whatsoever. Um, it's like, that's why they make millions of dollars and it's why everybody pretty much hates them. Um, it, it's, it boggles my mind, but I'm, I'm trying to concentrate on good, positive things. So, like I said, let me know what you think of people like Phoenix Resale, um, DK Oldies, like these resellers and stuff. Because, like, Phoenix Resale is just as bad with his prices on Amazon and such than he is on anything else. So, he goes well above what the market value is. He will basically try to offer you 60%, 50-60%, of resale which it's like he'll probably try to drop if you see him or something he'll probably try to drop it down to 40 percent or lower on you if you saw him at like a market show or something i mean i would never i would i don't think i would ever do it with sell with him because like i said i've seen those lawyer books and his study so the guy can it's like i don't know if he's more argued law or his wife's argued law, but he's obviously a smooth talker um, because that's how you do resale. It's like with these stores, it's like you're gotta be like really tricky. So would I wanna deal with that? No, I, I mean, I would not get a good deal. So I would never, I would never make a deal because I don't truly feel he would try to make a 100% equitable deal with me as a gamer. Um, now, like I said, I think the other stores that like would be at the shows would make equitable deals and it would make more sense to trade with them and get value. It just makes more sense. Um, but anyways, these are my opinions and my opinions only. You might have good opinions and you might have better opinions than mine. Um, like I said, leave them below in the chat. 
um, and I will try to respond to each and every single one of your comments. If you want to call me a blowharding idiot and I know nothing what I'm talking about, that's fine. I'm okay with it. It's all good. Um, just basically wanted to, I'm just here to spread my love of video games. I mean, obviously I have a few, um, but I also wanted to gauge what you want on the channel. I have lots of things, lots of baseball game videos coming. Um, basically every morning at nine o'clock Eastern, I have a new video releasing with a new day of baseball. Um, so every day a video comes on the channel at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, I turned off because it's like, it's, it's, we're several weeks into it now. I've turned off the premieres, um, used to put the premieres on right away. And I think people got it, get annoyed with this premiere thing flashing every time. Um, especially when you're like a month into a season, you really don't want to see those anymore. I can see them being like tiring. Um, but this is going to have a premiere in it because it's a new video and it's a new discussion. So let me know what you think below. Um, do you think I should do like an A to Z but instead of doing an A to Z on my entire collection, should I do an A to Z on NES or Super NES or PlayStation or PlayStation 2? Or I mean, let me know what you think below. Um, I do like really love interacting with everybody in the community. Like I said, I'm very happy and very excited about Siege. Um, just made my hotel reservation, so I'm like really excited. Um, I got my hotel reservation. I got my tickets. We're all set. I'm all ready to go. Um, hope you all are all too. Um, let me know also below if you're going to Siege. Um, and I do want to basically say hey to everybody, hang out. Um, and basically it's just basically enjoy ourselves because I mean, how often have we been able to in the last couple of years been able to hang out and do something. I have never been to one of these gaming shows, so I am like nervous and excited all at the same time um, because I've never been to one. The last time I was at something similar, 1988, I was in uh, the Valley Forge Convention Center and what they had was it wasn't a gaming show. It was, they were basically, we were basically able to buy computer parts and computers, other computer stuff. But there was other sections that had computer games and they had stuff for the Commodore 64, PC. Um, and you would be able to buy all the software and hardware. Um, and you can either pay to have somebody build your own PC or you can just get, you can buy the parts all separately, which was very informative because I was able to learn, basically find all the parts that I needed and build my own computer. Cause it was something I really wanted to do. Um, and I was basically doing a comparison back in the day, figuring out which was cheaper to do, grabbing all my parts and buying them single, single, singly, um, one by one, or is it better to buy them all as one big group and have it built for me? Um, interestingly enough, it was actually cheaper to have it be built for me um, with the pretty much same hardware specs because they can get it in wholesale and it's easier for them to do it. So it was a lesson learned there. I never knew that they'd be able to do that, but it's all good. I learned, you, you learn something and stuff when you're younger. But anyways, enough about that. Um, let me know in the comments below some of that stuff with the videos, with other things, and we'll go from there. Until the next time, this is David B 69 and it is like 2 in the morning. That's why I'm rambling, so I apologize for the rambling. So until then, have a great day, everybody. Peace.